This room already has a fill coat applied, it's nice and dry, so I'm getting ready to apply the finish coat. Um, so I'm going to quickly sand all the seams and, and maybe along the inside corners too with my pole sander here and I have like a 220 grit paper on it. See what I'm trying to do? See that little start and stop spot? That's all I'm trying to do is get that off of there. So now my finish coat will go on a lot better. Even here I've got some uh, tool marks where I blended in the butted seam. Just gonna knock those off. So that's really all there is to it. You're not, you're not finished sanding, you're just, I call it brushing. We're just brushing over to clean it up just a little bit. But now I'm gonna use the power sander to help knock down some of the uh, thick edges and tool marks I've created around these window build outs. This uh, sander came just with one short holes, an actual kind of a short extension cord. So I, I put another extension cord and taped another hose together so I can really work a much larger area with only a 10 foot hose. It was difficult for me to uh, do a whole room without dragging the, the dust extractor around. So this is just something I modified a little bit. It has a variable speed, so I usually set it to like a number three because um, it gives me a little more control. Now on this particular coat, which is a finished coat, it's going to be a really tight coat. I'm not really trying to leave a crown or a large amount of compound. So that's when I do turn this, this in. I usually turn it into a one or a two. This compound is a little bit thinner than what I used when I was putting my fill coat on. So I have to be a little more cautious about spilling it out. You can see that it does take quite a bit of uh, force to push it out. And I'm walking pretty much underneath the box as I'm going. But if you find that you're pushing really, really hard and your arm is killing you, it's probably because you have the mud too thick. I'm pretty happy with that. No sense in suffering. I do go over it twice. I'm pretty happy with that. So now I'm going to do uh, the butter seams. This butted seam here was a little more of a crown, so it's a little wider, but I'm still going to um, try the box on it. I'm gonna do each edge of it. And that'll just be touched up when I'm on my stills pointing up all those uh, intersections. So I'm gonna coat the seams right into the corners and the outside corners. Now right here where I boxed that seam earlier, I'm just gonna do a quick fill. Smooth that in a little better. As I go through, put a quick coat on all the fasteners. <coughs> Whenever I get like a new employee, one of the first things I have them do is coat fasteners because they get used to handling the compound. You put some compound on your taping knife and you put your pan or your trowel down and now you're gonna coat all these fasteners without playing with the compound. And that kind of teaches them to learn some efficient ways of taping. But I always do them as I'm moving along in the service. I don't come back and do all the fasteners later. We have some butted seams that have intersected a beveled edge seam, and I'm going to uh, blend that in where I've taped from, with my boxes earlier. And this will also give me an opportunity to just look things over. Am I happy with the width of this seam? Down at the bottom here, I had a little problem with uh, I don't know what it was. I think the drywall wasn't attached. There was a little bit of a bump down there. So I had to feather that in even wider. So I'm putting extra compound on there, on there now. I'm gonna take my 12 inch knife and I'm just going to smooth that in.
All right, I've got all the uh, seams finish coated with the boxes. I've got all my window uh, corner beads all tied in. That's got the finish coat on it. Now I'm back on my stilts. I'm going to touch up all the intersections with the butted seams at the beveled edge seams. And I'm going to point up the inside corners for the final time. I'm just trying to blend the intersection in here. I'm not going to be able to get it perfect, but this is going to be sanded once it's dry. So my main goal here is to get it looking pretty darn good and have plenty of compound on to blend that in. I can just take a glance at this and if there was something I didn't like about this edge, for example, I can just put a little compound on it right now just to fill it, just to feather it in a little better. Okay, now I'm going to move over into this corner. Yesterday we coated all the inside corners, both edges at the same time. And then I pointed this inside three way up. That was not the last time it has to be done though. This is the last time. So I'm doing the opposite edges today. In the opposite direction. So I'm doing that edge, the top edge here. And the edge along the top of this wall. There, I'm all set there. The other thing I need to focus on is where the, the seams intersect with this, out, this inside corner. That I need to blend in a little bit better. So I'm just going to take some compound and fill right along this edge. Then of course we need to put the final coat on all the screws. Okay, I think we got it all pointed up. I've shown a whole bunch of different tools and techniques and tips, all this to help you possibly decide what was going to work best for you. To get more information and to see more videos, make sure you log on today to findhomebuilding.com.